In this video, I'm going to be reacting to how India made cricket a billion dollar business. This has been highly requested. Let's get into it. Cricket, a quiet sport. Pioneered by the British. <laughs> Measured, <laughs> considered. Timeless. All right, just just from a just from a pure storytelling standpoint, I've got to comment on the the difference between the the quietness and then the the, the the dynamics here. This is great storytelling. I can already see a tension. I can already see a tension uh, being created uh, about the the you know the gentleman's game, and then you know the the bringing the excitement to the game. So this is going to be fun. Just a couple of decades ago, cricket was struggling to attract audiences and its commercial future was very much in doubt. Now, it has the second biggest sporting franchise in the world, bettered wow. only by the NFL. At the centre of its success is okay. one country and its record-breaking tournament, the Indian Premier League. So there's been a revolution in cricket. Traditionally, what used to happen, when English cricket started, cricket and the rest of the world stopped. Now, such is the glamour of IPL, such are the riches the IPL provides, that English cricket has to bow down to India. There are 74 right. games now Bold in the claim. IPL, and each one is valued at over 10 million pounds for one game. There's no way that other formats of the game before could have commanded that sort of financial power or, or value. Mm. The figures okay. that are talked about is that 80% of world cricket's income is provided by India in one form or the other. India currently has a population of 1.4 billion people. IPL has a viewership of almost 700 million people. Worldwide fan base wow. for cricket is about 2.5 billion people. We are 27% of that total fan base worldwide. So potential to grow this viewership, immense, massive. This is the story of how That's one a, country... Those are sta staggering numbers to think about, huh? I wonder, I wonder why, I'm, I'm sure that this is going to get into the history, but I wonder why it became such a popular sport in, in India. And I, I guarantee they're going to get into that in this video, but... ...came the driving force behind the biggest sporting turnaround of the 21st century. Well, cricket is this unique English game. The English invented most of the sports, but cricket is probably unique in that the two sets of players are doing opposite things. One of them is playing with a bat and the other mm -hmm. one is playing with a ball. It's one of those kind of quite enigmatic sports to describe, I think. It's the battle between runs, the number of runs you can score, versus the number of wickets and a wicket is when a batter gets out and so it's a contest right. between runs and wickets. The overall aim of the game is to score more runs than the opposing team. Right. A run is essentially a point and it's given... That's one thing, uh, that's one thing as I've done some cricket reactions, that's the thing that I've started to realize uh, and forgive me in my Americanness, I'm going to, to talk about baseball for a second. Um, and how in baseball, runs are hard to come by, relatively, um, unless you're pumping steroids and then, you know, you can come up with lots of runs. But um, runs are relatively hard to come by, and outs are prevalent. You have 27 outs a game. Um, but in cricket, it's the opposite. The wickets are um, harder to come by, and runs are prevalent. And so, uh, that's something that I actually find very interesting, and maybe potentially more enjoyable than even baseball and as i continue to to watch cricket the more i start to to really appreciate it every time a batter runs between the wickets which is possible after the ball has been bowled four runs are given if the batsman hits the ball beyond the boundary of the pitch with the ball having yep. hit the ground 
A six is given for batters who can clear the boundary Grand slam. without the ball hitting the ground. The fielding team bowls to the batting team. A fielder bowls in sets of six balls, which are called an over. After each over, the bowler changes. The best way to prevent the batting team from scoring is by getting the batsman out or taking wickets. This can be done in many ways, bowling, catching, or running out. Once 10 of the 11 bats... Didn't somebody say there were like 11 ways in cricket to get a batsman out? Um, but like five of them are the most dominant ways, like being caught out or being, um, uh, I guess, knocking the, the... What's that thing called on top of the wicket? Batsmen are out, their innings finishes, and they can't score any more runs. The same is true if they run out of time, which varies depending on the type of cricket game and is where the most revolution has taken place in recent years. Its most traditional format is multi-day cricket, so where it's played with a red ball and there are three and results white. possible, win, lose Test or draw. Cricket. So I know people are completely stumped by the fact that you can play a game for five days and still draw at the end of it. Cricket's complicated rules and long playtime meant it struggled to appeal to fans outside Commonwealth. Also, countries. speaking of, for any Americans who want to, to make a big deal about... In fact, let me look this up real quick. For Americans who want to make a big deal about the fact that cricket is played over five days, let me just look this up real fast right here. Longest baseball game in history. Y'all get me two hours later. Two hours later. So the longest professional baseball game uh, was the, the score was 3 to 2 and the game lasted 33 innings with 8 hours and 25 minutes of playing time. Uh, the first 32 innings were played overnight from April 18th to April 19th. Um, so the game actually lasted April 18th, April 19th, okay, and the tie-breaking 33rd inning was played on June 23rd, 1981. So, in 1981, there was a baseball game that took the span of two days, and then they played the, the last inning of it months later. So, yeah, it happens in our sport, too. Don't, don't make it like that's the reason you don't like cricket. Come on who had deeply historical ties to the game. Invented in England in the 1600s, cricket arrived in other parts of the globe during the late 17th and 18th centuries via British colonizers. The British took the game to different parts of the world as they expanded, as they went in search of trade and then they acquired territories. They didn't tell people you have to play our sport. They played their sport and the other people seeing the British play the sport was attracted by it. While a number of the Commonwealth countries adopted the game as their own, one managed to turn the sport into big business. I think the Indians, who India. no chance at all, are likely to give a great deal more travel than many people expect. When I was a very young boy, that was a long time ago, in the 50s, as a five-year-old, I was taken in India, in Mumbai, to watch uh, England play India. Mihir Bose, the BBC's first sports news editor, is one of cricket's best-known commentators. His most recent hmm. book, Nine Waves, the extraordinary story of how India took over the cricket world, traces the country's rise from colonial dependency to global dominance within the sport. The money in cricket hmm. came through, and this was worldwide, came through people at the gates buying tickets. When a, a team came over in England, Australia, West Indies, uh, New Zealand or wh whoever, there would be in the cities what was called a test fever. People would want to buy tickets, there would be long queues to get tickets and so on. And, and that was the situation till well into the 1990s. Really? Television had shown its potential in India during the 1982 Asian Games but it wasn't until the 1990s when domestic viewership reached critical mass that its full potential could be capitalized on. The cricket authorities in India realized television stations were prepared to pay big money. By then, crowds had declined all over the world. People were watching uh. on television and English cricket and Australian cricket found that when they played India, they could sell their television rights to these Indian 
television stations for a, a lot, lot of money. More money. And oh. that is where India, if you like, took over the world game. While the sport's original days-long format continued to have an appeal with long-standing fans, cricket struggled to entice new, younger audiences. This pressure only intensified as the unparalleled popularity of mega-franchises like the NFL and the EPL continued to proliferate. In an attempt to right. reinvigorate the sport, a variety of shorter formats with fewer overs were created. England, finding audiences were not coming to cricket, spectators were not coming to cricket, devised a new format of the game. Well, it... that has to be... Okay, so it's not to, it's not to make a negative statement among, among five-day test cricket. I still get comments from people who talk about how the, the, the five-day test cricket matches are the, the way that they prefer to watch the sport. And I can actually kind of get that. From the clips I've seen of people just kind of sitting enjoying a nice beautiful day and and watching a sport be played i can i can see the draw in that and i can i can get behind that I actually probably would enjoy that but um i can see how you know with the busyness of life and scheduling and just you know people just don't have five days that they can take off of work or that they can fit their schedule around a five day long test or a five day long test cricket match and so i think that as somebody who has, like, I've watched, I've reacted to, like, seven cricket videos or something like that. So I, I should have no sway, no opinion in this. But I, and from my standpoint, I would much rather go to a T20 game or a game that I know, you know, I, I can devote three hours to this. And I get to leave with a result and with some with some excitement and juice from the game. Uh, I can't I can't make my schedule work to go sit for five days straight. So I can see how like the, the point that's being made in the video is that the attendance and, and crowds were down. I can see why. Because, you know, five days is hard to hard to attend in the fast paced society we live in today. Only twenty overs were bowled by each side, you know, shorten the game, because then you could play the game in an English summer, start it at two, one, or one or two o'clock, play it till about seven o'clock, eight o'clock, and somebody could finish their work at five, and this pop in for two or three hours. That was the idea. Hmm. England's 20 over format, also known as T20 or 2020, launched its first professional tournament in 2003. The shorter format made it a much better fit for broadcasters. Sky Sports televised eight right. group matches and the entirety of Finals Day Live. England's T20 World Cup was a success domestically and had proved the potential of a more explosive version of the game. But it would take a total disruption in 2008 to change the course of cricket. And that disruptor came in the form of the Indian Premier League. Okay. No matter which I don't know anything about the IPO. In, over the next 51 days, it's only one time, and that is to celebrate cricket's biggest festival. Welcome to the Vivo Indian Premier League. They made it into a spectacle, and the old-fashioned traditionalists find this abhorrent. To them, that's not cricket. Cricket is theatre, where, you know, you have intellectual discussions as to where the ball is played, and so on and so forth. Ah. Theatre, where gentlemen... I feel like I need to get my, uh... My gentlemanly... For gentlemen. <laughs> you get... <laughs> All right, for gentlemen, let's get into this. No, you don't need all that. You want entertainment. You want to rival what the cinema offers you, what any other form of entertainment offers you. The IPL didn't just take inspiration from America's pre-show entertainment and pyrotechnics. It also adopted a similar league structure where the same teams compete every year. For the IPL, they devised completely new teams. So it became Mumbai Indians, owned by one of the richest businessmen in India, composed, some of them from Mumbai, composed of players from around the world. Or the Chennai Super Kings, or, you know, um, the Kolkata Knight Raiders. So they came up with these exotic names. You know, the one difference is, this is not about a country playing another country. The one difference is you're able to, mm. as a franchise, attract the best 
uh, in an auction, uh, which is done prior to the season beginning, where you bid for the best players in the world for a certain price tag. How much has the IPL you know, changed the face of cricket? Because of the money involved. Yeah, hmm. well, I mean, the, the money involved is huge. Shane Warren. These days. What a legend. This is a time of upheaval in sport. When Speaking of Shane Warren, the legend, you can check out, uh, I did a reaction video to Shane Warren in his uh, leg uh, spin bowling. So, if, you, if you're interested in that, check that out. Moneyed leagues promising big payouts threaten to upend the status quo. From Saudi Arabia's controversial LIV golf tour mm. that saw golfers sign I up despite like concerns over the country's human rights record and then lose their place on renowned PGA tours, to the proposed European Super League, a breakaway competition in football designed to guarantee millions of dollars for a select few at the expense of long-established leagues. And the IPL is no different, with only 10 teams competing, each under owners with deep pockets. It quickly attracted the world's best players, causing issues for any other tournaments that took place during the IPL season. Player choice, scheduling, the kind of proliferation of short format leagues, whilst also trying to schedule international cricket, whether it's test match cricket, the domestic game, the other international formats. Mm. You know, it's, it's, it is quite a challenging jigsaw puzzle. The organisation unofficially in charge of putting that puzzle together is the Board of Control for Cricket in India, or the BCCI. While the International Cricket Council is named the Global Watchman, money, as is often the case, wields power. The humble truth here is the BCCI is the richest body today in the world of uh, cricket across the globe. And I think it's purely because of the mm. success of IPL, fa massively. So you've got sponsorship deals coming pouring through every single corner of the room into the BCCI. 80% of world cricket's income is provided by India in one form or the other. There's television rights, there are commercial deals. When India play abroad, if you look around the stadiums, the marketing of the sponsors' names are Indian sponsors' names because they have got the rights, they want their names right, on television right, right. because Indians are watching and therefore they'll sell the products. So the BCCI obviously continues to, uh, you know, aggregate power in its hands purely because of the type of consumers it has at its disposal, the Indian consumer. Like I said, uh, 700 million people watching IPL, which has probably... I have a, I have a quick question, because I've noticed a little bit as I watch this channel, for I know there's going to be Indian viewers coming in to check out this video, because Indian viewers check out all of my cricket reactions. I also have English viewers who check out my cricket reactions, and most of them are they're fans of both football or soccer and cricket. Uh, I wonder how much, and I know I know this from from previous um, reactions to football, that there's a huge Indian fan base in football, but they don't really have the infrastructure or the culture of playing that sport in India. So I wonder if you're an Indian uh, fan watching this video, uh, do you actually follow both sports or is cricket like your number one? I know that's kind of off topic, but it's something that just, that just came to me because I was thinking about it. The least number of games across any sporting uh, you know, format across the world. I'm not just talking cricket, I'm talking NFL, I'm talking about ML MLB, I'm talking EPL. This has the least number of games. It has the maximum viewership. Mm. Wow. Least number of games, maximum viewership. The success viewership. of the 2022 IPL Media Rights e-auction highlighted just how successful this franchise has become in such a short period of time. The TV and digital rights for 2022 to 2027 matches collectively sold for $6.2 billion. Wow. This not only reaffirmed the IPL as the leading cricket league, but also made it the second most valuable league globally. That is insane. At more than $13 million per match, the IPL has surpassed global leagues such as the EPL and the MLB, and is second only to the NFL. Why is the NBA so low? That's interesting. I guess that's mainly domestic viewership on the NBA. And why is the NFL so high if so many people claim that they do not like that sport? I get comment after comment about how uninteresting NFL football is to everyone outside of the United States. Why is it dominating um, the, you know, 
why is it dominating then if but the NBA is so low? I don't know. I'm confused by some of these numbers here. Disney bagged the TV rights and a joint venture between Paramount and Mukesh Ambani's Reliance Industries won digital streaming rights. Media companies are constantly uh, working hard to make sure they, they get the right form of content such that the consumer uh, loyalty continues to stick and grow. Uh, if you look at the case of Netflix in the two quarters that went by, they, they actually said they're going to come off massively on their consumer numbers only because uh, you know they're not able to penetrate countries like India which require a different form of content. Uh, I'm not saying that they should go after cricket as a as a possible broadcasting theme. They may, who knows, but if you get uh, you know sport which is universal has no language something like a football or a cricket uh, which actually attracts more consumers given its religious following in those specific countries I mm -hmm. don't see a reason why you will see more media companies coming and you know trying to get a partnership with the BCCI given the the massive fan following across the world. Wow. It's widely agreed upon that media is what's propelled the values of teams to such astronomical heights. In the US, the Big Ten, a college football conference, just signed an $8 billion media rights deal. And Apple signed on to a 10-year global broadcast deal to stream Major, Major League, League Soccer, Soccer yeah. worth $250 million. With so much untapped revenue to play for, a flurry of new T20 leagues are being created in an attempt to ride the wave of the IPL's success. Hmm. South Africa have started fleshing out details of the new T20 league. Players are already on board, a broadcast deal has been confirmed, and team owners revealed. It says previous attempts at getting an international T20 league off the ground have failed. South Africa and the UAE are both set to launch new T20 leagues in 2023, adding to an already packed cricketing calendar. Wow. These tournaments will put a further strain on resources and talent especially as the current ruling by the BCCI states no Indian national player can take part in other leagues unless they permanently retire from the IPL and wow, national that's cricket. tough. The thinking here is that players competing in other T20 tournaments will take fans to those franchises, which could lead to tougher competition in terms of attraction, attention and brand value okay. for the IPL. All right. So, you so see they the want a stranglehold on the sport. Uh, room in Australia, the, the Big Bash League, the Caribbean Premier League, one in England, and now two new leagues being uh, launched, just announced, one in South Africa and the other one in, in Dubai, the Emirates Cricket Board. Now, the fact is, in all of these leagues, Indian players who have a global fan following are not allowed to hmm. play. That's the rule. And if you can't get you know, the likes of MS Dhoni or Virat Kohli or some of the other big boys that we have playing cricket across the world for their country and in the IPL league, uh, I think you will lose that many audiences. In an interview with ANI Sports in August 2020, the BCCI Vice President Rajiv Shukla commented on the matter. Our Indian Premier League is itself a huge league and we cannot allow any of our players to attach themselves to any foreign league in any manner. Okay. The owners of the IPL teams have found a clever way to compete with these burgeoning leagues. Buying the competition all teams within South Africa's new T20 tournament have been bought by the owners of IPL teams. <laughs> okay. There are 10 team owners in India. All of them have tasted immense success in IPLs. They've seen their valuation go from literally nothing to now close to $2 billion per franchise given the media rights valuation. When you taste that kind of success in a limited time frame of 10 or 15 years, you certainly want to experiment as an owner, a team owner, and see what this can do if other leagues take off. Now, non-cricketing countries, seeing the opportunity that T20 brings, are beginning to hedge their bets. Not only is the shorter format an easier game to sell to those countries with less understanding of the sport, but the money floating around and growing demand for talent offers the perfect incentive for young athletes. Hmm. Right now we're in the middle of a hysterical event for Cricket Finland because we've never hosted uh, an international cricket tournament before. I think from our perspective as a non-traditional country, we've been looking at, uh, at the data that's come out from our uh, World Cup qualifier event. There are quite significant viewership figures which have come through purely uh, from a Finnish-based viewership. Hmm. Um, and I think 
looking at that in terms of the way forward, that's come about simply because uh, the game itself has become more attractive for people to actually come and watch. It's become something which is, is more sold as a product, has more things going on for, for the viewer when they... Sold as a product. That reminds me of the last video that I put out on my channel. If you want to go check that one out where I talked about how American sports are different from sports around the world. All right. The old iPhone ran out of storage. Let's get into this. Ground. We've tried to sort of mirror that here with a, with a very smaller version. Obviously, we haven't got a 100,000-seater stadium as they've got it, or a traditional uh, cricket ground in, in India or in England. But at the same time, we have uh, looked at it to actually think about how we can actually get new people interested in the game and have somebody at the game that is, uh, that is referring to what's actually happening on the cricket field to somebody that's never seen a game of cricket before. Hmm. For Finland, a country whose own national sport, Persapolo, is also bat and ball based, T20 offers a potentially easy transition for players and viewers. You only have to look at the average salaries of Persapolo and IPL athletes to understand the opportunity here. Hmm. What is In 2019, Persapolo? the highest salary for a Persapolo player was about $55,000. That same year, the IPL's top paid cricketer, Virat Kohli's salary and winnings came in $4 at around $4 million. That's not to mention the $21 million he banked through endorsements. The opportunities that are there for players in non-traditional countries to actually have access to the global, the global stage, whether that's IPL, whether that's another franchise somewhere else in the world, or whether that's within the, the ICC's global pathway events. I think that's something which has itself only developed in the last five to 10 years. Every other cricket board internationally is trying this format because they think it will result in them getting uh, a lot of largies in, so in terms of dollars mm -hmm. that come in. And they can in turn improve the local infrastructure of the game in their respective countries, which they probably can't do uh, given the current state of finances. So. It's a chicken and egg situation. If they are able to successfully attract uh, and stage the first or second season of the tournament by attracting some world-class uh, players and getting adequate consumers, media companies will come and funnel those as well. Now, cricket is hoping to break into the largest sports market in the world, the US. The US's Major League Cricket competition is set to launch in 2023. I don't know if it's going to work. By investors Hopefully. such as Bollywood superstar Shah Rukh Khan and Microsoft chairman Satya Nadella. The following year, in 2024, Los Angeles will jointly host the T20 World Cup with the West Indies. All right. There's also a bid by the ICC to feature cricket for the first time ever in the Olympics, which will also be in LA in 2028. With so much interest in the sport and its expansion, investors are picking apart the business model and exploring ways to capitalize even further. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see. I mean, I, I think that we should definitely probably give it a shot and see what happens, but I'm more skeptical of Americans actually getting involved in cricket. I am... I'm more hopeful and optimistic about Americans becoming involved with football or soccer. I'm not so sold on this. I mean, we have a we already have a bat and ball based sport that um, has, is known as the American pastime, and so I don't know. Maybe with the younger generation, we might start becoming involved in cricket. But it will take time. It will take a lot of time if, if they want to try to grow some appreciation for cricket in the States. That's my opinion. I don't know. Could be wrong. It has now gone to serious business where large business owners across the globe are seeing this as an opportunity to own a franchise, uh, probably improve governance, uh, get more independent sportsmen to come on the boards of these companies and therefore attract the best talent, get sponsorships and increase the scale and size of what they can do in the respective franchises. Sport has become business and sport is still run and that is true beyond cricket in other sports but particularly in cricket as if it's a, it's a, it's a cottage industry. We haven't got off the field the sort of leaders and administrators we need 
to, to run a, a, a big industry like this, an industry that appeals to millions of people and which can affect the, the lives of millions of people because for them it's a, it's, right. it's a form of entertainment that they value. So interesting. It really does connect so quick back to the last video that I did on this channel, which was the um, the American sports are different from sports around the world. I talked about entertainment value in sports, and it seems as if that same mindset is uh, is at work and at play in the uh, IPL. That's very interesting. I don't know. Uh, what do you think about this video? If you like this video, go ahead and smash like for me. Comment down below what you what you thought about my reaction to this video. Uh, correct any of the misguided comments that I might have made. Let me know what I'm what I'm missing with my opinions here. And also, if you like what you saw on this channel, I'd love to earn your subscription. We're on the road to 25,000 subscribers. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.